last class. Uh, the authentication, the authentication, the access control. Uh, the mechanism we discussed last class it was a role base, and uh, we said that the role base is the context of uh, assigning access to resources, whatever resources are based on uh, a session that actually would draw a line in between a path in between the uh, subject and uh, the object. Uh, there are sessions to set up the uh, time frame to set up the path. Uh, mainly, technically, the session is a period of time to assign uh, to draw the relationship in between the user and the, uh, the, uh, the resource or the subject and the resource. Uh, specifically, specifically, after the, the authentication. Uh, there are four role-based uh, views via which we assign the, uh, the, the access. Uh, R0, which is actually the minimum or the minimal functionality to be given to a subject versus a, an object. The minimal functionality just to make the system run. This to be given to all users, to all authenticated users. Then after R1 or R1, uh, it is actually the same uh, back zero, which is the minimal functionality, in addition to an inheritance. Inheritance, it, it, it would come actually from the, from the user type. Let's say an administrator, a student, an inspector, a technician. So whatever the group that the user of the session belongs to, the inheritance would be a part. What is the inheritance? It means what the group have or has as properties, that, uh, that session would be actually assigned those actually uh, properties to we talk about permissions. So our back zero plus inheritance. This is the back one. Our back two is the same our back zero, which is the minimal functionality in addition to, in addition to uh, uh, let's say, uh, constraints. What actually uh, uh, can be uh, viewed or cannot be viewed, what can be accessed, what cannot be accessed. Some constraints to set up on a group of resources to control the access, no more, no, no less. So the constraints, the condition, or the conditional access to resources to be added to the minimal functionality. It would give actually an extra value. It's not, it would not, it's not, it's not uh, only give actually a, a more restriction to the minimal functionality. No, it would give an extra uh, value so an extra, an extra chance an extra uh, capability to access resources so our bug zero plus uh, constraints success and resources uh, would give actually our back two the r3 or our back three actually it is a context via which we see the totality of the functionality described here the minimal plus the inheritance plus the constraints all of them deployed in just one scenario to give us the R back three. Example of these, uh, of these uh, subdivisions, uh, we see actually an organization that on top we have the manager, the other director, and we have the segregation of the groups based on departments and sections. This is a good example of role-based uh, uh, access control, role-based access control. Examples of uh, constraints, <clears throat> if you belong to, if you belong to actually uh, a certain group, so you'll not be able to see the properties of the other groups, mutually exclusive here. If you are a student, you'll not be able actually to have the uh, permission of an instructor. So you'll be having actually only the student capabilities. So uh, you are not belonging to the instructor's group in the domain or in the controller, you'll be actually uh, mutually sent out from the uh, groups where you do not belong as, uh, as, uh, as a user type. Another actually constraint, the number of, of uh, uh, users accessing a resource, uh, it is another cardinality, it is another, sorry, it is another constraint 
technically represented by the word cardinality, which is actually the number of members from an entity to, uh, to have a relation with another entity. Technically, we are technically speaking here. So the number of, of users accessing a resource might be controlled. So here we talk about uh, cardinality. Because as we can give the example of actually a department, how many heads in the department? We just have one, one head. So you cannot have actually two department heads. So it is actually a cardinality constraint here. We cannot have an, uh, we cannot be having actually two head members in just one department. So the system cannot accept that cardinality actually constraint. Uh, another another constraint, which is actually uh, primordial requests. What does it mean? Actually, if you are uh, willing to have an access to a resource, there have to be actually in this cons in this point of view only a prerequisite that we have to pass through in order to be awarded an access to uh, to that specific resource. Yeah, actually, we talk about the prerequisite constraint. If you want to access the resource B. You have to pass, to pass through the constraint A. Whatever the constraint A is, might be an authentication, might be actually a resource to download first or to view first or to pass through. It might be an interface. So there is a prerequisite. This is actually a constraint. We pass to a third model of uh, uh, access control. Actually, this is the fourth, not the third. Uh, we saw the discretionary, the mandatory, role-based, and here it is the attribute-based, attribute-based access control. Attribute-based, or oh, in our book also, in, or in, uh, in other resources, you might find it actually rule-based. Let's let me write it to make you see the word. The rule base. The one before. Was role base. Let me just um, load the page. Yes, here is the role base. And in addition to that, we have the rule base. We have a problem with the computer, just give me a second. So let's continue. Actually, I got stuck in this computer, actually. Now we continue. The attribute base is another uh, scenario which we may award access to resources. We may award the uh, uh, subjects access to resources. Uh, here, actually, the controller is based on the use of the attributes. If the uh, attributes uh, fulfill any requirements, so you might have uh, awarded an access. Otherwise, no. Actually, it is um, a fairly new uh, approach. It means actually it is not uh, from the first uh, the primordial access control mechanisms. Uh, we may actually award a subject an access uh, resource um, in the sense of 
if a subject has a property related with an, an, uh, an object, so it might access that resource. Otherwise, it might be blocked. I said it might be. Why? Because there are constraints when, when implementing and we can actually control a subject to access the resource based on attributes while there are no uh, relationship. Thus, I said might be blocked and might be accessed actually, uh, might, might be actually awarded an access to the resource. Uh, so, so based on uh, the attributes, will be awarded uh, access to subjects, uh, will be awarded a subjects access to resources. Uh, uh, it is said actually a single rule state ownership here, uh, in a sense of uh, dedicating a privilege to a specific subject to ask specific resource. Uh, this is actually much more uh, flexible when compared to other models since we are able to control subjects individually because properties they are uh, attributes they are uh, properties related to subjects specifically and related to objects specifically. So instances of uh, subjects subjects would be controlled individually. And thus it is actually a strength point here. Uh, and this uh, context, <coughs> since, since it is actually much more flexible and it is much more advanced when compared to other access control models, it is 100% the best to fit. It's not unique, but it's the, the best to fit the uh, cloud environment. <coughs> since the cloud environment is segregated and uh, it's much more uh, complicated environment when compared to a simple uh, computer network environment, uh, the uh, attribute-based access control is, uh, is a much more convenient to be applied uh, in the cloud environment. Here you have to understand the cloud features in order to, to uh, translate this. And we know, we know as per the uh, definition of what is the cloud computer. Cloud computer. <coughs> Uh, examples of attributes, uh, we have actually categories, but uh, remember that in the uh, uh, context of access control, we have to talk about the uh, subject, and the subject has to have attributes. We have to talk about objects or object, and the object has to have attributes in plural. And you have to talk about an environment where the bytes are, and the environment has attributes also. The subject attributes example we talk about uh, here, name, organization, job title, things like that. Attributes. Examples of object attributes, date, uh, author, the name, the title, whatever. Environment attributes. Actually, what is the environment, first of all, in order to know? Since we said that the environment is the place where the bytes are. A right to access, a right to read, a right to write, a right to, uh, um, to do all, even to execute. Hey, those bytes, where they, they would be actually set? We define them actually in the Unix environment. So the environment would be actually imposing attributes to us here in this context, the attribute-based access control. Thus, the um, environment has to be defined to us, first of all, in order to know what are the attributes related to the environment. And the environment, mainly here, we talk about the operating system or the server or, or where the resources are resided. So uh, from where the uh, user starts the authentication process until reaching the, uh, reaching the uh, resources, uh, all this scope is the environment uh, view. There, the attributes might be applied or from there, the attributes might be extracted. Uh, if you talk about an operating system, so the current date, the local the date and time, actually the uh, activities of security apply. We talk about the antivirus or whatever, the security appliance or utility. Uh, the uh, layer we work on, are we, are we talking about 100% uh, talking about remote access? Yes, so network security level. Whatever the attribute, since it is from the 
uh, work area, the environment. So it is an attribute related to the environment. The uh, attributes here, we cannot say the, uh, for example, the file name, the file, or the, the table name inside, inside the database. Why? Because the, the table name or the entity name, it is something related to the object resource. Or if it is actually the session name, <coughs> session name, it is actually uh, session ID, sorry, session ID, it is related to the subject. So those are resource, or, uh, let's say object attribute, or subject or user attributes. They are not environment attributes. Remember that. So the environment attributes, they are the uh, attributes extracted from where, from where, the, the place you're talking, uh, the action place, action plane. Uh, the uh, the writes are resided. Writes, remember, read, write and execute. In this example here, in this example here, actually, we have a subject. He's trying to log in step number one to an environment. He's trying to uh, access, to be granted uh, an access right. Step number one. Step number two, actually, it, to be, it is to uh, be authenticated. And the admin level, admin level, we'll see the rules set, see, as I said earlier, attribute based, it is said to be rule based, see here, yeah. the rule based of the, actually, um, here the administrator, the, uh, at the admin point, we see the list of rules, do they allow the uh, user in number one, presented in number, in step number one, does he have any chance to uh, access the resource or not? How to do so? By reading the, the attributes, to be step number two B by reading the attributes of this subject, the decision to be taken, rules and attributes. Then after, if yes, if yes, then after we pass to the next level. Actually, here yeah, the step number C, because the access, the subject who is it? If we talk about, for example, about the ADA, might be a student, might be an administrator, might be an inspector, a technician. Sessions they differ. All of them they use the same platform, but sessions they are actually uh, completely different. Why I, I'm saying completely different? Because when we talk about the, uh, for example, the ID, we are going to take the ID. If the ID belongs to belongs to the list of the users of the environment, it is not enough to set up an attribute-based access control to a resource. Why? Because Workers, they have an ID. Students, they have an ID. Whomever belongs to the institute has an ID. All of them, they have IDs. So using the ID only, while the ID is an attribute, cannot lead to a successful a back scenario. Attribute-based DAX control. How to defer an administrator from a student using the ID only. Cannot. There has to be another filter. There has to be another level. To see the level to see here, who is it? The type of the user and so on. Another filter here, still based on the attributes only. When you say actually the type of the user, actually user type, we can find it an attribute inside the table, inside the database. So still using the attributes only. Uh, after this attribute here, we see the environment attributes. Number two, D. What does it mean? For example, we don't want you and we don't allow you to access the model. Uh, for example, after 4 p.m. Right, how to check this? This is based on the environment attributes. 2D, step number 2D. If 2A, 2D, uh, sorry, yes, uh, to A, to B, to C, and to D, they have been fulfilled. The user, number one, will be awarded the next to the object here. Who can repeat what I just said right now?
who can be explain what I just asked you, or what I just explained you now. Okay, great. Let's pass. One step further. Okay, great. See uh, the uh, the uh, application of the uh, attribute based axis control. It is not just written simply the axis control list available in the environment because the resources available in the environment 100% they have actually uh, attributes and uh, constraints to manage their display. Thus, the system will award an axis or make an axis denied. The system or the environment will do will award an axis denied to a specific subject. Sorry, to a specific object. The attribute-based axis control it's more it's beyond that. It it makes the axis control lists in plural much more fine. They filter more the axis to resources. We have a subject here. At the end, he tries to access an object. Okay, there is an access control list here available to help in making decision to make the actual decision making in the access control. Yes, you are awarded or no, you are you are forbidden. Get out. So the subject will be passing through the authentication phase. Step number one: authentication. We have four mechanisms for the authentication, and we saw that in unit number three. If yes. Validated. He will pass to the axis control. Those are attributes to be considered at the authentication. Okay, we come to the axis control, which is our interest here. How will be, be he is inside the environment first of all, because the authentication has happened. The input here is an authenticated candidate. This authenticated user or subject or candidate uh, is asking to access resource. He, uh, this candidate might be me, you, anybody. Since you are successfully access, uh, 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 fulfilled actually the uh, requirements and you access the system, so you may ask to, uh, to, to open a resource, to reach a resource. How to be awarded an access to that resource? The access control list will come to, uh, into action. Access control list related to the object will allow you or will be forbidden you. Okay, the access control list, is, there are some attributes. And we saw the SDDL last lab, um, uh, security descriptive definition language, G group of attributes related to the object to allow or not to allow the access to that uh, object. More than that comes the attributes and we see them here. They are interfering the access reader, the access control list reader. The access control actually list, or lists in plural, was read and sent to the uh, engine where the decision is made to award access or not. There, the attributes would come, would appear. In this level here, uh, where we see now. Attributes related to the subjects, attributes related to the object, attributes related to the environment, or they come here, in this level. After actually, positive decision means yes, you are awarded an access, an access, enforce, an access control enforcement will be set. <clears throat> it is a sort of a session to guarantee that the access is awarded for a period of time, not just a click. And then after, you'll not be able to use it if it is just a click. So there have to be a session, which is an, inform an enforcement. Any questions, please? Any requests? No, Mr. Exactly. Yes, sir. Sorry. No question. That's great. That's great. Okay, good. Uh, exactly what I was just explaining to you. The uh, the the access control lists. They are actually group of attributes or 
هي وي تيك ذام از رولز دي هيلب ان ميك دي ديسيجن اند ذوز رولز اكشلي دي ريد دي اتريبيوتس اند از وي سيد اتريبيوتس دي مايت بي اكشلي اوبجيكت اتريبيوتس سبجيكت اتريبيوتس اور انفايرمنت اتريبيوتس there are different attributes so we saw them three groups actually all of them they would actually interfere in uh, making the decision whether to access or not to access the object who the authenticated candidate the authenticated party the authenticated user the inputted data or request will be actually given an access a positive reply after all those treatments, reading the subject attributes, the object attributes, the environment attributes, and the rules preset. We'll stop. <coughs> the four models, discretionary, mandatory, um, role-based, and rule-based, or attribute-based. Those are very famous uh, pillars and uh, actually principles in uh, access control. Those are mechanisms that we uh, may think of immediately when never asked to implement an access control rule or mechanism. I may use the word mechanism, not rule. Uh, yet they are not unique. We see actually a specific and dedicated uh, uh, model. It's, uh, it's another access mechanism, the ICAM, Identity Credential and Access Management. Actually, it is a scenario via which the Department of Defense in the United States has uh, developed for their own purpose. It uses the identity plus group of credentials given, the identification of those two, to manage the access to a resource. Identity, given ID, example. Credentials, you have to specify your scenario of authentication. We saw the... Uh, um, password based or the uh, let's say the um, whatever the uh, whatever the authentication scenario utilizes in addition to the uh, identity uh, provided in real time the scenario this icon will do the management to award you an access or no these specifically set in this environment, which is actually the uh, DOD, Department of Defense, United States. But here actually it's a proof that the uh, four models here of, of access control, the discretionary, mandatory, uh, role and rule, they are not unique that we can stand on to uh, manage the access control resources with the system. So we may build, we may build a specific and dedicated access control system proper to a specific environment. The view of this uh, ICAM comes here. Uh, we see actually an identity management scene here. Actually, um, whatever the, the ID you provide, even normal citizens and whatever the users, there is an ID. Otherwise, without ID, you cannot start, actually. Uh, then, after, then after, actually, we have actually a credential management which is actually another, uh, uh, let's say, layer uh, function. It's another process to do. What are, what are the credentials you provide? As we said, the, uh, the context of authentication. So how you authenticate? You've been enrolled or not? Yes, yeah, so you can go on. Uh, then after we have the management process, which is yes or no, you access or you don't access. This is the context of managing the access. At the end of the day, we make a decision to let you in or not to let you in. One, you present yourself. Two, your credentials. Uh, th um, three, actually, you do the, 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 uh, the management of yes or no, making the decision, taking the decision, and so on. Uh, then after classify you, actually, from the step number three, either you pass or not. You are awarded an answer. We come to an end in this unit, in this uh, context of uh, access control. Unless you have any requests, we will pass to unit number five. 
I'll uh, make the attendance. I'll take the attendance if you hear your name, please uh, say yes. <laughs> 